Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to our sessions. Uh, my name is Diem. Can you hear me? OK, let me fix this a bit. Uh, my name is Diem, and uh, my colleague, Chan Chis, we are working at Istio, uh, Istio Security at Google. Uh, today, we present uh, how we use Envoy SDS API to uh, securely and seamlessly provision, uh, identity provision for workload in Kubernetes. Um, so before getting into detail, I try, uh, I want to give some background about Istio first. Uh, just a quick hand, how many of you have already used Istio like experimental? Good, quite a good number. And how many using this for mutual TOS feature? Not so many, but still good. Um, so let's quickly go through some definitions. Uh, we heard about service mesh a lot today, I guess. And so very quick, one sentence definition. Uh, service mesh is an infrastructure running on top of networking layer, provide a transparent and language independent way to uh, automate application network functions, whether it is load balance, quota, telemetry, uh, routing, uh, and security. So what is Istio? First of all, Istio is a service mesh, uh, one of the popular ones today, I guess. Uh, but more than that, Istio is a platform. Istio was designed the way you can plug in uh, any kind of solution for your telemetry, for um, testing, for asset control, etc. Um, Istio can, I mean, the, the, the value proposition of Istio can be summarized to three categories. Uh, any form of availability. It's still running on the network layer, so it's able to see everything happen on the network. Um, so it can collect statistic, metric, and send that information to the telemetry backend of your choice. Uh, you know, stack driver, uh, Prometheus, etc. Thanks to that, uh, user developer can focus on the application within uh, logic rather than uh, uh, operation. Operational agility. This is about uh, how the ability to to um, to route your traffic through your mesh, to uh, route the traffic through your mesh. Uh, you can uh, do canary rollout, blue green rollout. Uh, you can set quota for your services. Um, you know, you can inject fault to test uh, your inject fault into network to test your service resilience, and so on. And last but not least is uh, security. It still provides a comprehensive security solution for your uh, applications. Out of the box, we uh, provide the service-to-service um, uh, -service encryption and strong identity using uh, based on mutual TOS. Uh, with authorization, authorization policy, you can uh, define a fine-grained asset control to your to individual service or even individual request. So here's a diagram of uh, Istio architecture. Uh, you have your service running your pod, uh, a gray box over there. So you may notice that Istio drop in next to your service uh, and as a proxy container running next uh, on the same network space of your service. That uh, hexagon over there is the Leaf Envoy icon. Uh, it's a very lightweight, very fast, high-performance proxy. Um, running next to the service is able to intercept and filter all the traffic in and out of your application, uh, provide a layer of, uh, to control the traffic to your application. So this is a programmable proxy. You can program it by giving a static configuration data and to Envoy to load at run uh, to load at starting time. But Envoy can do better than that. It, uh, it offers a comprehensive uh, set of API, Discovery Service API, or call it XDS for short. And you can implement a service or services 
um, provide the, uh, offer this API to provide the configuration at runtime. And that's where Istio came in. Uh, Istio provide a central plane, central control plane. Uh, Pilot basically is the implementation of the XDS. It's uh, responsible to send the rule of configuration to Envoy to enforce uh, you know, the security or networking policy that you want to apply. Mixer receives the traffic, uh, sorry, uh, the telemetry data came out from Envoy and send it to the back end of your choice. And Citadel is the component that manage uh, key and certificate that power the mutual TOS. Uh, it take, it's, um, it's, it's, it issues the key and certificate for every service account, uh, community service account, uh, basically the identity model that is still used, distribute that to the service that needed. After that, pilot can uh, program, uh, uh, pilot can tell Envoy, here's the key cert it should use to connect to other services. I, or what is the subject owned name that it need to uh, expect from the server uh, to enforce the uh, mutual TOS and also secure naming, strong secure naming. So let's go a little, deep, uh, a little bit deeper into how exactly Citadel do this for 1.0. Before I mean today we are East TOS 1.1 and. Uh, before 1.1, the key and cert is generated by Citadel and mount into uh, uh, five, second mount into workload. So basically, Citadel is set up to listen to the API server. Uh, for every service that can be seen, it creates a key cert, a self-side key cert, and put it back into Kubernetes secret. When a pod is deployed, uh, the Saika injection is another process of that uh, inject the Saika into your port. Uh, either you run it using the Istio cuttle command or via web uh, hook. Uh, via web hook. Uh, it injects the proxy as well as it mounts the secret volume corresponding to the secret uh, uh, that corresponding to the service account that running the port. Um, and and then after that, as uh, I mentioned earlier, pilot tell proxy to use that and establish the mutual TOS to connect to other services. So there are a few problems with this approach. Um, first, every time Citadel rotates the key and cert, what it does is create a new key and new key cert and put into secret the a small program running inside a proxy container, restart proxy in order to reload the key cert, so it causes a little bit interruption. Not too much, but still not desirable. The second problem, which is more serious, is the key is generated in Citadel, and then sent to a uh, workload via the wire. Uh, even the secret, but it's, as you know, is increase the uh, attack surface for uh, compromise the key. And third is also about that. Uh, the key and third actually store in community secret, mount into the workload as a file mouse. So if the, the container is compromised, uh, uh, the key and third can be accessed easily. Um, so my colleague will uh, explain how we fix all this problem with SDS. Okay, thank you, uh, DM. So uh, later, uh, let me uh, explain the new identity, uh, the work workload identity provision workflow that we introduced in Istio release 1.1. .1. So before we dive into the detailed step of the new pipeline, let's give some background of what is Envoy, the secret discover service. Uh, since this is service mesh channel, 
uh, probably many of you have heard like existing unweighed discover service like LDS, CDS, or RDS. Basically, it allows the unweighed to fetch the configuration like listener, cluster, routing, those conf configuration dynamically from the control plane. Uh, similarly, SDS, the secret discover service, allows the unweighed to fetch back the secret, the private key, and the certificate information from the SDS server without restart. So because uh, we load the key and the cert in the memory, so it's more secure compared with the previous file mount approach. Also, uh, this will allow us to plug multiple CA. Like today, we already support the Citadel and Vault and Google Many CA. So you can basically plug your own CA into the new system. So we will cover that in more detail in later slides. As you can see, this is the uh, SDS API interface. It's very simple, just the two API method. One is the stream secret, the other is the fetch secret. The only difference between this API is the stream is pushed based and the fetch is pull based. So in current ECO implementation, we use the stream secret API. Um, because whenever the certificate get updated, the SDF server can push the new certificate timely to the SDS client. So next, let's take a look uh, step by step about the new identity uh, provision pipeline. The first thing you notice from the left side is we introduce a new component in Istio 1.1, which is we call it node agent. So this is the SDS server. It manages all the certificate, the key and the certificate for all the Istio set car running on the same node. So you may ask, since we already have pilot that running as the uh, like the LDS, CDS, the pilot will generate LDS and CDS and RDS and push it to the Istio set car. Why we just why we not just use pilot as the SDS server? Uh, the short answer for that is for better security. As you can see from this model, because the SDS server and SDS client, they run on the same VM, on the same node. So basically, uh, the SDS server generates the private key, and this private key never leaves this node. So compared with putting the, let pilot handle this, this approach is much more secure. So let's take a look at the, the, the pipeline. So first, when a service joins the mesh, pilot is able to de detect that. So pilot, the first thing is pilot will send the listener config and since uh, the cluster config to the sidecar. So you can see, and uh, the SDS config basically is inside listener config and uh, cluster config. As you can see from the right side is the sample config of the cluster config. I can see, you can see inside of the cluster config, there is a section, what we call the SDS config. And in the SDS config, we specify the Unix domain socket. So basically, the SDS client and the SDS server, they communicate with each other through the Unix domain socket. So the first thing is pilot will send the SDS config to the onward, to the ECO set car. So after the ECO set car get the SDS config, it will construct the SDS request. Basically, it's the stream secret API we just saw in previous slide and send this request to the SDS server. Basically, it's the node agent in this picture. So in this, line, uh, in this request, it will carry a security secure token. So in most cases, this will be a Kubernetes service account jot. So after the node agent get the uh, SDS request, it will generate the private key. And at the same time, SDS server will send the CSR request, the certificate signed request to the CA. In this picture, the CA is Citadel. But as we mentioned, today we already support the customer CA, which how to do that is what we will cover that in more detail in later slides. 
So another thing worth to mention is the CSR request also carries the security token passed from the Istio sidecar. So we need to send this CSR request through the secure channel. So after Citadel, the CA, get the signed certificate request, it will first validate this security to secure token, the Kubernetes service account JOT, against the API server. If this is a valid JOT, Citadel will sign the certificate and send it back to the HDS server. And after the HDS server get the signed certificate, it will send the private key and the certificate back to the unwed sidecar so that the sidecar get the key set pair and it can use it to start the mutual, com mutual TS communication with other service. So basically, this is how the workload identity provision pipeline work in Istio 1.1. So as I mentioned earlier, one major benefit of this approach is uh, there's no traffic interruption during the key cert rotation. So next, I will show a quick demo to, to show that. Okay, so this is what I record last Friday. Uh, as you can see, we have a Kubernetes cluster, and uh, in this cluster, we have the Istio control plane deployed. Also, we have two sample apps installed. They are HTTP Bing and Sleep. So HTTP Bing is the client-side app, and Sleep is the server-side app. Both of them have Istio sidecar injected. Also, I uh, config the certificate rotation happen every five minutes. By the way, this is just for demo purpose. We suggest to use longer certificate rotation in your production environment. And uh, next, uh, I will try to get back the certificate used by the server, that used by the HTTP Bing. So uh, in this demo, I do that by remote to the uh, sidecar container of the client app. So first, uh, let me uh, try to remote to the Istio proxy container of the, the Sleep app. Okay, so now I'm seeing the Istio proxy container of the client side app. Next, I will use the open SSL command to fetch the certificate used by the HTTPB. As you can see, after I run this command, it will give me the server side certificate. As you can see, this is the decode format of the server side certificate. So one thing worth to mention is there are two timestamps there. One, uh, it has the timestamp when the certificate is issued. Also, the timestamp the certificate is going to expire. Also, the same field is the identity used by the server. As you can see, this service is running in default namespace and it runs as HTTP Bing SA service account. So the rotation happens every five minutes. By the way, on the right side of the screen, I have a test script. So basically what this script does is it sends some curl command from the client side app to the server side app to the HTTP Bing. And I keep it running in the while loop and uh, print out the response code. So before I start the probe, let's make sure the certificate uh, rotation haven't happened yet. As you can see, it's still the use the old certificate. Now I start, keep running this, the probe script. And as you can see, the response code is always 200. So let's keep it running for another one or two minutes. The certificate rotation should be happen like very soon, as you can see, it's going to expire in 2 a.m. and the current timestamp is 1.58. So the rotation should happen in one or two minutes. And uh, let's keep an eye on the right side of the screen. Let's see if there is any traffic interruptions happen here during the certificate rotation. Another thing worth to mention is uh, the certificate rotation should happen before it expires. So the server side should be able to handle that. 
Okay, let's keep it uh, run, and uh, we will run the OpenSSL again to see if we get the new certificate from the server. Okay, as you can see, the, right now it's still the old timestamp. Okay, I ran it again. As you can see, the timestamp get updated, which means now the ACS client get a new certificate from the server side. And then meanwhile, on the right side of the screen, the response code is always 200, which means during the certificate rotation, there's no traffic interruption. So before this demo uh, finish, let's make sure in this environment, the mutual TS is enabled between service to service communication. So we can do that uh, by first check the mesh policy, which is the authentication policy. And we can dump the mesh policy and see that the mutual TS is enabled in this cluster globally. Another way we can double check the mutual TS is is enabled is we can dump some unweighted configuration. So for example, I can download, uh, dump the server side unweighted. So uh, let me put forward the unweighted configuration to my laptop. And we can see how it looks like. So if I refresh here, and I uh, search for active listener. As you can see, in the filter chain, we do have the TLTS context settings there, which means whenever the server side accepts the traffic, it will use the certificate to authenticate the client side. So which means in this environment, the mutual TS is uh, enabled and used. OK, so this is the uh, demo part. So I will return uh, back to the, to the slides. So uh, in the previous demo, we showed that uh, there's no traffic interruption during certificate ro rotation. So next, let's dig into a little more about how, uh, the, how the certificate rotation is handled under the hood. As you can see from this picture, the first request flow is what we already covered in the previous slides. So basically, the client side will send, follow the Envoy SDS API, send the stream secret request to the SDS server. And the SDS server will send the CSR to the CA and uh, get back the signed certificate and return to the sidecar. So this is the steps we already covered in the previous slides. And uh, how we handle the certificate rotation is in the server side, we cache all the unweighted connections. And for each unweighted connection, we cache the signed certificate and the private key. And there is a timer job running periodically at the server side. So it will basically iterate all the cached secret and check if this is going to be expired soon. If it is, the server side will construct the error response and send to the uh, sidecar and the sidecar will reconnect it with the update token. So this is for the scenario that your security token is going to change in each certificate rotation. For some token, the token is, is the same. So in this case, the SDS server don't necessarily need to send the response to the client. It just send the CSR request with the token to the CA again to get back the update signed certificate so that it will update the secret cache and send the update uh, certificate to the client side so that this is how the certificate rotation happened and the hood. Uh, so in the previous slides, we basically focus on um, the mutual TS between uh, workload and workload, but how about the control plane? So there are two user cases we need to uh, deal with the control plane. First example is uh, when the uh, ECO sidecar first start, it will talk to pilot to fetch back 
the dynamic configuration, like listener cluster configuration from pilot. So we need to secure the connection between workload and pilot. Another uh, scenario is the control plane component may need to talk to each other. One example is in Istio 1.1, we introduced a new component called Gally. So basically, pilot and mixer talk to Gally and fetch back the policy CRDs. So we need to secure the connection, say, between Gally and pilot and mixer. So in today's Istio, we still use the old approach that is the secret file mount on the Istio control plane, so which will cause the traffic interruption. That is not the ideal solution, and we are, we are going to replace that with the SDS so that we don't have any traffic interruption in the Istio control plane. And this is a diagram of how to do that. So basically, in each of the uh, sidecar of Istio, we baked a bootstrap file into the proxy, the, the sidecar's Docker image. So in the bootstrap file, we have the unweight static config. So basically, uh, how, how, the un, how the Istio sidecar start sequences, it will first uh, bootstrap from that static config and talk to pilot, fetch back dynamic config, and uh, start using the dy dynamic config to perform all the uh, functionalities like routing, blah, blah. So uh, to secure the Istio control plane, we are adding the uh, ACS to the bootstrap file so that when the sidecar first started, it will talk to the SDS server to fetch back the certificate information so that the connection used between the ECO workload sidecar and the pilot, they will be secure through the SDS. Also, the workload can also talk to Mixer to send, back, send the check and the report call. So this connection will also going to secure through the SDS. So this is about the uh, control plane. So another thing worth to mention is uh, how to plug your own CA to the new system. As we mentioned in the previous slides, in Istio 1.1, we already support uh, Citadel, Vault, and Google Managed CA as uh, the, uh, the central the, the, the CA. And there is another PR that uh, is trying to plug the spile as the CA. So basically, if you want, you can plug your own CA into the system. And how to do that is quite simple. So basically, you just need to write your CA client to handle the CSR request and put a configuration like your CA endpoint. So I put the link in the slides to point to the sample code and sample configuration that used by Citadel and Vault. So basically, you just need to follow this example and write your own CA client and the configuration. So if you hit any issues that during this integration, feel free to open issues on the GitHub. So I and my teammates are very happy to, to help. I think that's all we have for today. Is there any questions? Okay. Uh, thanks for, for the extensive uh, details first. Um, the protocol uh, which uh, the node agent speaks to DCA, is it some open protocol? Is it your own? Is it ACME? Is it something else? In today's implementation, we define uh, uh, our own the interface. So basically, if, if you want to plug into your OCA, probably just follow that interface or write some adapter if your kind of CA don't expose, yeah, like that. But uh, it should be very simple. Yeah, thanks. Who, who will install this node agent and when, when, at which phase install will be node agent installed? Uh, so today we have a, 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 a sample in the ECO.io, the official web website, how to do that. So basically, uh, when SDS and node agent is enabled, it will install when the ECO control plane is installed. But uh, it's not a by default. It's not turned on by default now. So we have a, a, a page on istio.io how to do that. So feel free to raise GitHub issues if you hit any issues during the installation.
about how that could be applied on gateways as well? Oh, so, so the question is uh, how we leverage the SDS on the issue in ingress gateway. So, um, there's a, so this, this session is focused on workload. I'm not sure if you have attended the previous session that uh, happened before this. We, we have another session that focuses on how ECO ingress gateway, the certificate management using the Envoy SDS. So you, you can check uh, the ECO.io website. There is a page. Also, we can check the video later after it's published. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, I think we are good. Thank you so much.